All right, just a quick review. What do we know about classes, just in general? How would you describe a class? Right. It, right now, we just know it as like this blueprint. Remember, we made that class dog yesterday. I can make new instances of dog. And those instances are just objects, right? So once we initialize the class, we can call that initialize method with the dot new. So if I had a class school, if I wanted to make a new instance of this school, I would simply do school.new. I would pass it in some attributes. And then ultimately, that would give me this new instance. If I needed a reference to it, I would make a variable and assign it to school.new. And new calls initialize, right? The initialize method sets these sort of like private attributes initially um, using the at sign as these instance variables. These instance variables are now properties of this object. And so if I wanted access to these properties, I would have to create getter and setter methods, which we've learned about the syntactical sugar which we can combine into adder accessors or adder reader and writers if we needed the getter and setter respectively. That's basically what we covered up until this point. Feels good? About, feel good? All right. So what I want to kind of talk about now is let's just say I had a school, right? This class school and I had this class student. How would you describe the relationship between students and school? In regards to, um, let's just say, it's just in general. How would you describe? What are the words that come to your mind if you're like, what's the relationship between school and student? A school probably doesn't own students, but... Has a lot of students. Right, right. Schools have a lot of students, right? And each of these students goes to a school. And so that's kind of like this idea behind these relationships because they model what is known as like real world scenarios. And so if I have a class student, I have a class school, I can simply make an instance of a student just like I made the instance of school. Um, by the way, these are not like completely, like this code won't execute. These are just like little snippets. Like I don't have all the end statements. So if you're looking at it like, oh my God, that's not going to work, you're absolutely correct. All right, it's not going to work. I just wanted to fit it all into one little like screen, cool? So if I make an instance of school and I make an instance of student, the idea here is at some point I want to be able to create this relationship between school and student. And that is, uh, we saw earlier that we have like some sort of class method that we can build, like the self.all, which gives us the class method all. Really what I'm trying to see is like, if I do school.all, I should see all my schools. I want to be able to build some sort of method that says, if I'm looking at a particular school, like school one or school two, I would like to see all of that particular school's students. And what I would like it to be is like some sort of array. So if I'm like, hey, school one, how many students do you have? It should give me back an array of three or four students that belong to that school. That's the idea here. So far, so good? So. If I created this imaginary method and I had this array of students, right? J Cash, your boy, and then I've got some feedback that I've been saying J boy, and I didn't know how to spell it, so <laughs> I made a very feeble attempt. A there we go, just there for you. Go. So, what sort of properties and methods do I have on this J Cash object? Say again? Do I have access to Jcash? Just take a look real close here. Just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing here. This Jcash, right? What kind of methods do I have access to? If I were to take this Jcash and put dot class, what would I get? String. So I should get naturally string methods for Jcash. The problem is if Jcash is a real student, this person probably also has an age, right? Favorite class, right? Least favorite class. Other attributes associated. Right now this is a string object. What I want it to be is actually a student object. And that way if I'm looking at it, I can be like, oh my god, there are all these student methods associated with this object instead of all the string methods. 
So the idea is I want to get out of string land and into object land. Cool. You're like following along. That wasn't like too much of a stretch, right? So let's talk about like kind of how we do that and what we're going to go over today. So the first thing is going to be uh, something called one to many, right? And the model here is that stu students, right, belongs to this school, and then school has many students. So you have this one to many relationship. One school has many students, and each one of these students goes to a school. All right, so if we were to like kind of like map that out, okay, let's do this. There's a lot of cool resources on the on the interwebs that I'd like to show you. So one of them is something called AWWAPP. I said PP. <laughs> Anyways, um, it just stands for Awesome Whiteboard. Awesome like web whiteboard, I think. And so the reason I'm going to use this application is because I can easily like roll in a whiteboard here. But if you're like watching the recording, you're just going to kind of faintly hear me talk and it's not actually going to be on the screen, which is kind of useless. So I um, forgot my mouse like a clown, so I'm going to be drawing this with the utmost of perfect artistic skills on the mouse pad. So forgiveness, please. The idea here is that uh, I'm just going to draw a box that represents this school class. S is for school and it's cool. And I realize that students also starts with the S, so I'm just going to put uh, I don't know, this dollar sign, money, students, all right, that's how schools think of you, all right, terrible. Anyways, so you have school and students, all right, actually looks like a, anyway, so school and students, and the way I would describe it again is, let's just finish this out over here, oh, whoops, I meant school, sorry, this touchpad is not uh, beginner friendly, that's all right, we'll figure it out. We'll just, I think we'll be okay, right? It would be more complicated for me to go get the eraser and then dance around. All right, a school, right? If I were to draw a line here, I would say a school, right, has many students. I'm just going to draw more of these lines here, right? As sort of like this visual representation. One school has many students. And then for the student, though, if I were to kind of like trace it back, basically belongs to this one school, right? Like right now, I mean, you don't really like belong to Flatiron School, but you're attending Flatiron School. Unless you're uh, incredibly wealthy and you have a lot more time, you're probably only going to like one school at a time, right? Realistically, in this scenario. Yes. One school, just one, just one is fine, right? And so the reason I kind of talk about this is because this one to many relationship can be used to describe a lot of different scenarios and things. So, for example, I think there's this like really not popular website. Uh, it's called Twitter. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, it's kind of a big deal in my time. But the idea here is that on this Twitter website, if I'm going to try to build this out, I need to kind of describe what's happening on this website. And that is, let's just draw this other very fancy box and this other fancy box. right? And we have users for Twitter. right? So I'm just going to put you for users. And then we have, on Twitter, we have tweets. So I'm going to put T for tweets. So how would you describe this relationship between a user and tweets? If you make a brand new account on Twitter, can you only make one tweet and then you're like, cool, that's it, my account's done, I have spoken? You could, you could. But let's, let's be real, though. Is that what people do? I was going to say a user. Oh my God, what a great plant. Thank you for meeting me before class so we could discuss that. The idea here is that a user can make many tweets, right? I'm sure you have a lot of friends who are always talking about what's on their mind. No? Okay. I don't have a Twitter account. But if I did, I can have many tweets. The idea here is that for each of these tweets that I wrote, can they belong to anybody else? No, right? I can't be like, yo, check it out, fam, in lecture right now, holding it down, teaching mod one, NBD, and then I hit enter, I save it, and then it goes into the Twitterverse. Can anyone else claim that they made that tweet? No, it belongs to me, right? So 
what other sort of relationships can you imagine that are like one to many? It's a little, it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. Sure. Sure. A library has a lot of books, right? So let's let's draw that out. I'm gonna draw another. Dang. I was hoping for like a. Per, it almost looks like a flag. Library. Guess what I'm putting here. You would think I was going to put B because I am. <laughs> so here's library and books, right? And how would you describe this relationship between library and books? Let me draw this fancy line here. The library books. Yeah, absolutely, right? That's good English. Um, so I'm going to like condition you to start saying has many and belongs to, but that is actually the correct English. And that is a library has, uh, owns many books. And then each one of these books right, is inside a particular library, right? Like if I owned a copy of the dictionary, best book on earth, right? Great read. Once you read the dictionary, everything else is really just like a remix, right? So I have a one, <laughs> that was great, yes. I, know. I feel like I'm myself again. These jokes are for me. I'm going to look at this lecture 10 months from now. Uh, anyways, I have this dictionary, right? This one particular dictionary. Let's just say I had a class books or something, class book, and I made an instance called dictionary equals book.new. Now, this one book, can it be in two libraries at once? I like your enthusiasm right now. So it has to sort of belong to this one library. Right? Cool. Um, you can also like get kind of crazy, like instead of library, you could just mix this up. Blue, watch this. Uh, a for like author, right? Like you're an author like J.K. Rowling and she made a lot of these books. Who knows what they are? I heard she's a famous art author. And then each one of these famous books about a magical wizard uh, belongs to her, right? Nobody else is claiming that they wrote these books because they probably can't. But only ideally, right, an author can write many books and each one of those books belongs to one author. Let's not get into these weird edge cases where we talk yeah. about textbooks and there's like a ton of authors on there. We're not going to talk about that right now. We're talking about this like perfect world scenario. Cool? cool. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. When I say edge cases, I just mean that um, under like normal everyday circumstances, like 99% of the time, it will fall under this scenario. The 1% where there are exceptions to the rule are known as edge cases. All right, very good question. Thank you for, for asking. Please do that, by the way. If I say something, you're kind of like, I have no idea what you're saying. Um, just feel free to ask. I will tone down the sarcasm and the jokes. Or not. No, don't. Okay. All right, I took a poll. All right. So yeah, one to many. Who feels comfortable about this idea of one to many and this relationship between sort of these two things, right? So every time I talk about something like school and students, uh, authors books, library books, what I'm talking about is in your mind, each one of these is their own class, right? If I had a class of book, class of library, class of school, then they would be able to create instances like many of them, right? So I can have a lot of different schools and I can have a lot of different students, but still the relationship is School has many students, student belongs to a school, right? So I know it can kind of get dicey, but that's kind of the difference. So let's kind of talk a little bit about this idea of single source of truth. Now this is a very tricky and very tough concept to kind of think about. This is very tricky. The weird thing is like single source of truth that means that um, where I define a piece of information should only be, ever be in one place. Every time I talk about it, I'm going to reference this one place. Now, that doesn't really make sense right now, but just bear with me here. The idea here is let's just say I have a lot of students and I have a lot of schools, and this student belongs to a school, right? Now, even though we belong to one school kind of at one time, we've been to many different schools, right? We've been to many different schools. So 
Think about it this way. Uh, you've all been to elementary school, yes? Then you went to some sort of middle school, then you went to high school. In those records, the school can do something like school one, right, elementary school, dot students. And it will see literally your name, right? Like Sonia, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, whatever your name is. Swaglord. Swag, swag Lord, right? You could be Swaglord. And then you went to middle school, and then they made you fill out this stupid tally card, and you had to like write your name on it for attendance. No? This, it's just me? All right. Anyways. And then you put whatever you want on there, right? Like your Asian name, like Dai Lo, or whatever it is. And then you hand it in, and that essentially is stored in sort of like a string in their database. And so everywhere I go, in theory, I'm the same person. I'm one person. But my name is like Evans, Evans, Evans in all these records, right? Elementary school, middle school, high school, they just say that, hey, there's a student named Evans Wang there. If for whatever reason, right, it's 2019, I decide to get married and I change my last name, and now my last name is like Evans Buhe or something like that, then how would each one of these schools track the fact that that changed? They can't, right? It becomes terrible. I'd have to call every school individually and be like, yo, school one, I changed my name. Hey, school two, I changed my name. School three, I had to change my name. That kind of stinks. That's how you disappear. Right? But let's just say, through the magic of the internet, I had a very particular uh, sort of identity on the internet. Right? And I said, hey, school, when you put me in your database, don't type in the string, Evans. Just link it to this website. So I could be student ID 123. Whatever the name is, point it to the website. And then when I go to middle school, right, I am now in middle school student ID 944, but the information there points to my website. And then high school, the same thing. All I have to do is change the name on my website, and then all the other schools will know that it changed because they're all looking at the same point of reference. Does this make sense so far? And so that means that the website is the single source of truth, right? Because when I went to elementary school, I might have told them one name. I went to high school, I might have told them a different name. That means that there's no single source of truth. If cops come looking for me, they can be like, hey, is a, a guy named Evans Wang go to school? But like, no, we just had a swag lord come by, though. <laughs> He's pretty cool. And so everyone has like a different opinion, different view. But if there's one single source of truth, no matter what happens, everyone else will know about it. Cool? Who feels like a little bit better just by the idea that it's like this one point of reference? Question or you feel better? Okay, good. Sweet. That, kind of. Um, and so what I kind of want to talk about is I'm going to define a couple terms for you because as I use them, the definition is not going to make too much sense, but as you use them more and more, they will start to make sense because you will have like actual examples of them in your mind. So when I say a model, yeah? Sure. Website or be joining? Um, not not exactly. I think you you want to talk about many to many and like a, a join table. We're gonna go over that tomorrow, um, but I'll talk to you offline a little bit if you want clarification on that. But all I'm talking about is the single source of truth, and that is like one point of reference has all the information I need. So everyone just references that one thing, and they will all be correct always and forever. All right. So when I talk about model, what I'm talking about is like a class. So when I say like there's a book model, I'm talking about the class book and the define initialize and all the instance methods and attributes that are associated with it. So when I talk about like, hey, I have a library model, right? I have a user's model. I have a tweets model, right? It's just sort of that class, the blueprint that holds all the data about that particular thing. When I talk about the domain, I'm talking about like the subject matter of the problem. This one's a little tricky. 
But what I mean is, if I'm trying to build Twitter, the domain is sort of this social media platform. How do I build Twitter? What is my domain for Twitter? Well, I need users and I need them to be able to make tweets. When I talk about domain, I usually am referring to what, what am I talking about when I say domain? Literally, what am I talking about? That's what domain is. It's like the platform in which you're talking about. What is the problem? So if I say like domain modeling, Yes, like kind of like what is it that I'm t actually talking about is the domain itself, right? Like let's build a social media platform. That is the domain. But building the platform or social media itself? Uh, building the platform, I'd say. And so the idea behind like domain modeling is what models do I need for my domain, right? So let's just say uh, you guys are going to be building an app at the end of this, right? Whatever app you want to build, there's like a couple really funny ones. Um, one of the instructors here, one of the instructors here built this because uh, we all know we love the MTA and how reliable they are. This is around the time Pizza Rat came out. Do you remember Pizza Rat? Pizza Rat. So they were like, "Great, I want to make a game, and essentially, I want you to be able to travel on the subway and then fight these rats, and then there'd be bosses, like and, king rats, or like king rats. Sure, yeah." And so the domain is like, I want to build this like subway fighting game, right? What are the models that you need? Well, you need like heroes or characters or something. And then you need some sort of like enemies or boss model, right? And then what's the relationship to them? Sometimes there are no relationships, but maybe they just interact. They don't necessarily need a relationship, right? And so that's, hmm? Yeah. Right, and so that's kind of like this idea of domain modeling. What are the models that I need for my domain? Cool? This is all kind of like really tricky, but it, it gets easier with practice and time. Definitions are explicitly and purposefully abstract and vague because they need to encompass everything, if that's a fair answer. All right, cool. We talk a little bit about relationships, specifically one to many, and like why is it really important? Why do we need this like terminology of has many and belongs to? It's because, like I mentioned earlier, they're describing things that happen sort of in the real world, and they're based on like I'm trying to build something that potentially can affect the real world or is modeled after the real world. And so when I talk about students in schools, if I'm going to build some sort of app that maybe tracks all your grades or gives you green lights on labs, then I have a platform called Learn, and then there will be teachers, there will be some sort of teacher model, there will be some sort of student model, there will be some sort of admin model, and then I need to build out the platform from there. I mean, there's more models than that, but that's sort of like the idea, right? Cool. All right, let's actually get to it. So we can either build a custom one to many that you guys could talk about now, or I could build books and authors. Space and galaxies? Oh, like this one? Universe has many galaxies? And a galaxy belongs to a universe? I feel like it is really cool but because I am not scientifically well versed in this, looking for attributes and stuff will just detract from the point that we're trying to make and the concept of it. Although, yes, it is very cool. So let's do this. Let's just go with books and authors because it is actually so tame and boring that the concepts will become interesting. At least that's what I hope. Thank you, Chet. Yeah, I know. Oh. All right. So let's. Let's think this through, right? We have uh, this author. Cool. I have an author. Yeah. I mean, I was just gonna make. I was just gonna change it to whatever. You know, it's completely flexible. Uh, so I have this author, right? And I want to make a class for it. How would I do that? That is very specific, and I like that. All right. And I usually just do this, right? And the author class. Cool. And what do I need here? Right. The DFI. Dirty. Yeah. The 
Yes. Yeah. What you'll see is I'll try to like sneak in little tidbits here and best practices that you'll see in production. I won't do it too often because sometimes it's, they're very abstract, but little things like this I'll sneak in, yeah. So the first thing you'll notice is like my indentation is usually pretty good. And so you should be following some sort of indentation guidelines. If you don't know how to indentate, indent, <laughs> you don't know how to indent, that was my English not so good, right? If you don't know how to indent, I'll be happy to, I'll be happy to like kind of go over that stuff with you. Cool. All right, so what are some attributes of author? Huh? Publisher is related to and associated with an author, but is a publisher an attribute of the author? Like this, this author person, right, probably has like a name, maybe an age. Yes, which would mean that a author has many publishers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's just let's just stick with name for right now, right? This author has a name, no big deal. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Cool. So I wrote some code. I probably should test it. Boop, boop, boop. All right, I see that I have this author file. All I have to do is, I love that Zoom. It is obnoxious, but it is great. So I can just simply run Ruby author. And then I'll, I'll hit the binding right here on line 11. Can you guys see this or should I blow this side up? It's good? All right. So I could check to see, oh, is author there? Cool. Author's there. Is book here, though? Is there a book class that exists? No. So naturally, this makes sense, right? Like, hey, there's no initialized constant book. That'd be crazy because I didn't write a book class or anything. I kind of want to talk a little bit about... Um, this idea that we touched on yesterday, and that is when we instantiate new instances, right? So I can simply do array.new, and I can have five things in this array, and I want them all to be uh, Brianna. Cool? So I see this brand new array with five Briannas in them. Don't worry, you're one of a kind. Very good. Any questions on this? Really, we could break this down one step further and that we could say, in theory, what I really did was in this array, I sort of did like integer.new, I passed in five. Uh, we're not gonna go that hard, but I have like string.new and I passed in Brianna, right? I literally made a brand new string as I'm creating this argument while I was making a new array. So the idea is here that you can, like objects can kind of like make objects and objects, while making objects, can also make objects. You're like, oh my God. right? It sounded crazier than it is, but when you look at it, you're like, oh, that kind of makes sense, right? When I did array.new, I also did, at the same time, string.new. Cool. So this will come in at a later point, but great, we tested. Smart. So let's also make this book class while we're at it. Boop, boop, boop. Book. Boop, 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 boop. End book class. Right? Cool. Little DFI action. And what are the attributes of a book? Sure. Title. What else? Year. Maybe like how, how, many, how long the book is. Maybe some pages or something. Let's just keep it like pretty simple. So pages. Right? Boop, boop, boop. Cool, no big deal, right? Um, we also, huh? Sure, we can do genre. Let's 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 go. Let's get after it. Genre. Boop, 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 boop. Right. But what else about the book? What would you describe as an attribute of the book, as it relates to an author? Would you say that the author of the book is an attribute of the book? Like, who wrote me? If I was a book, right? If I'm a dictionary, I'm going to go, of course, it's my good friends Miriam and Webster. Still, still those jokes for me. It's okay. Right? Would you, would you be okay with this if I put, like, author in here? Cool. Yes. 
Yes. I'm leading you down a path. Oh no, Anakin. Going down a path I can't follow. Um, so anyways, that was awkward. It's like a bad Star Wars reference. So what do we know right now in terms of like the attributes? Do I have access to them? Can I read and or write them? Cool. So let's, let's fix that problem, right? What of all of these do you think I should be able to read and or write? I feel like they're all read, right? Sort of like a read-only kind of thing. All right, I have title, I have pages, I have a genre, and I have an author. Cool? Oh, my bad. Wow, that highlighting, it's so powerful. So what about author, right? Do I have access to this thing? Should I just do reader? Can you change your own name? Right. But for our purposes, let's just let's just be able to read and or write. Cool? I'm telling a story. But yeah, you yeah, you're right. Typically you wouldn't, but the fact is you can. So, let's do that. Awesome. So really what I'm trying to do is kind of like establish this relationship between author and book. Right? So, let's think this through. If I am trying to establish a relationship between book and author. What do I know right now about this book class? How would I make a brand new book? What would it look like? Book.new, and then I would pass in what? Title, oh, like a real title. You guys have a book title? That's right, the, like, let's go with The Art of War. That wasn't racist. And it was by, that's right, sure, I wrote that book, very good. Oh, it's Pages, you're right, smart. This is a very long book, not really, it's a short read. Depends on the font size, really. Let's just put 100, let's make it super easy. And what would you say this genre is? Maybe tactics, maybe self-help, philosophy. This thing falls under a lot of things, right? Um, I don't know. What would you say this genre is? Classics. Classics? Classic? Sure. And who wrote uh, and who wrote this? Sun. Old Sun. Two. Powerful. Right. Also, thank you for that. We met earlier. That's a good plan. The idea here is that like what if, for whatever reason, right, in the same example scenario that I was talking about in terms of like the school and the students, if I ever changed, if this person ever changed their name, right, what would happen in terms of the, this reference? Would this change appropriately as well? No, so there's no real association between them, right? What I really want to do is something like uh, Old Sonny, right, he's a good friend of mine, make it author, Right, dot new and pass in the name of Sun Tzu. Proper nouns. Let's let's get after it here. And then instead of like Sun Tzu the string, I want to pass in the instance of the author. Right? Which is what? It's my boy Sonny, right? We go way back, we hang out all the time, came to my wedding. It's a drunk. So is there any kind of like <laughs> Yes, this joke again, jokes for me. Um <laughs> <laughs> Are there any sort of like confusion as to how I made this leap and why we want to use these objects and stay in object land and get out of string land? It feels like, all right about this. Who feels like, man, that was terrible, I don't understand this at all. And it's okay because it helps me kind of gauge where you are and I like might try explaining it a different way. And I'm going to assume that that's probably okay. Okay, so remember, I had Sun Tzu in here, right? Sun Tzu. The thing is, Sun Tzu probably also has attributes, right? Like, is this person an alcoholic? Boolean, right, true, false. Or, right, is this person, like, 
handsome, true, false, age, like a thousand. I don't know how old he is. Uh, but right now, I only have string methods available to Sun Tzu. If, however, I did something like this, I would have all of the author methods available to me on this instance of Sunny. Yes, let's actually do this and have the example work. The idea here is this is what I'm trying to do. But if you remember when I was inside the pry, what do I have access to right here in terms of classes? Just the book, right? I don't have access to author. So naturally on line 14, it'll be like, hey, you don't have access to author, uninitialized constant, and it will error out. So what I really need is I need access to both of these classes and both of these files. So what I can do is I can go inside my folder structure and I can just make a brand new file, right? In order to make a file, it's the command is called touch. Kind of creepy, but it's fine, right? And so what I'm trying to do is make this sort of like combo file where I have book and author in the same file so I have access to both of them because I'm trying to do this like crazy contrived example. <laughs> um, normally what this is called is sort of like run.rb where I'm going to like run everything. Um, but this is sort of like this combo file. Cool. And there it is. Look, run. Indeed, I can run it, run it. And what I want to do is in this run file, the first thing is I'm very error prone. And I'm a terrible developer. So I put in this pry for debugging purposes. Now, if I want an author and book, how can I pull those in here? Can I easily just take author, copy this? Take book, copy it, and then paste it into run? I can. But is there a better way, TM? Right. There's, there's something that like, I think in the labs I kind of talked about that you can like pull in all these other files so that you can start separating out your files so that all your different files are organized in their own thing. So I can just do this require relative as opposed to require. Does anyone know the difference? Yeah. Require, require pulls in from like your gems. And then require relative will pull in a file that is relative to this file. So if I want to pull in the author file, relatively speaking, it's in the same folder. Right? So if I'm looking in the exact same folder, what is the sort of like command for that? Like you've seen me do this, right? I'm in like one to many. If I want to go up one folder into 060319, how would I do it? I would do change directory, dot, dot, right? The two dots means go up one folder. What does the one dot mean? This current folder. So if I know that relatively speaking, inside run, inside the exact same folder, I have a file called author.rb, I can go in this folder, there is something called author.rb. But you don't really need the .rb because this is a Ruby file and that's a Ruby file and it's smart. Cool? So if I do the same thing and I pull in book, and all I do now is test the pry, Get, get out of here. Bloop. If I were to run this file, right, ruby run.rb, I'm going to hit this pry. What the? Just kidding. Absolutely. So here, right, remember, errors are your friend, right? You can't be scared of these things. And so just by simply reading this, I could see that, hey, undefined method adder accessor for author class. Cool. I go into my author class, and yeah, you're totally right. There's a typo. There's a boo-boo. Good deal. Great. So this just, all it does is this require relative. So does author exist, and does book exist? But does library exist? What about string? Yeah, because it's just a string class, right? Almost fooled you. I didn't fool anyone. I tried. So, cool. So what I can do is I can kind of like now do like all that crazy stuff I wanted to do earlier. 
So let me exit out of here. And let me go back into this book class. And let me pull this out. And go into this run. Because I now know I have access to both of these files, this code should, in theory, sort of run. Right? So let's check. Cool. So the binding's on 11, and Sunny, my good friend, is on line 7. Do I have access to Sunny? Yeah. So if I take a look at Sunny, I see it's an instance of the author class. It's an object. If I look at, oh no, I don't have a reference to this, so I'll just copy it like a dirtbag. Right? If I put book equals to this, cool. Take a look at what we see here. I see that when I do book.new and I pass in a string, a number, a string, and then I pass in a brand new object. What's another way I can kind of write this instead of referring to an old object? Let me do this so you can see it on one line. If I were to do, right, book2 equals to book.new, and I were to simply say, I don't know, string.new, right, what's a book you guys like? Oh, okay, sure. Um, house 5. How about 1984? Sure, House 5, right? And then, um, I don't know, how many pages is this book? Five. Five, wow. There's a theme going on here. And what is the genre of this book? Right? I would say happy, maybe friendly, passive, aggressive. What? And this is not a real genre, but, I mean, you get the point, right? I can, in fact, instead of passing in an author, you know who wrote this book? Okay, I'm just going to put Mr. V. Right? That, that sounded very difficult to spell. Now I'm embarrassed. Instead of this Mr. V, which is really string.new Mr. V, I can make Mr. V an author. And what is the first argument for author? Name, right? So I'm going to put Mr. V. Are there any kind of questions as to like how we kind of made that jump? Remember when I did array.new and then like right inside I put string.new? That jump shouldn't have been too crazy, right? So, yeah, two questions. Does this only work if the runtime argument Yes. No, because it doesn't have access to the other files. Yeah, just wanted to clarify that. Uh, the yeah. second thing is, um, why wouldn't you just, did you have to fill out all of this, uh, all of the new authors? Well, right now, I think author only has name, but yeah, you'd have to fill in all the attributes. Sorry, well, my question is, like, why wouldn't you do author.new Yes, right. So the question is, like, why did I do something like author.new Mr. V and not do author.new Mr. V dot name? Because yeah. if I did dot name at this, what would that give me back? What would that return? What does this return. I just copied and pasted it. Yeah. Command C, Command V, very powerful. What would this return me? It would give me a string back, which would be the exact equivalent of passing a string here. And I'm trying to get out of string land and into object land. Right? Because here's the power, right? And so to your point, here's the power. Now I have this book2, which is a book object. It's an instance of book. And the attribute author is its own object. It is not a string. It's its own object. So what methods do I have on the author object? All of the author methods. Right? So for example, if I were to go book Two, dash and to name the capital B, but it's fine. If I go to book two, it gives me the book object. And I can say, book two, what is your genre? What should it be? Cool. And what is book two dot author? It's the author object. So in that case, in theory, 
this person also has a name attribute. Now I will get the string Mr. V. So now you can start to see that if I had a lot of methods on the author class, a lot of instance methods on the author class, in theory, this author object can do all of those methods as opposed to the string with just the name Mr. V. And so that's kind of like how you can start chaining and start powering up and building larger and larger applications by being in object land and getting out of string land. That's for bozos. You don't want to be there. Did that help at all? Like actually starting to see it now? Cool. Yeah? All right. So now let's talk a little bit about like sort of like relationships and like how this could be powerful. We know that we can do something like a class variable. All right? Let's just set this to an array. And then I can do add at all, and I can simply push what? What am I adding into the all array? All right. This is going to come in handy later. Do I have access? Do I have a getter method right now for this class variable? No. So what do I have to do to get access to this? Build the getter method. That's right. I have to build the getter method for the class variable. So we know we could do that by saying simply in here self, right, is still inside the class. It is not inside an instance, which refers to the class itself. So self dot all. Whoop. Will just give me back that instance variable. Cool. We can also do the same for author because for whatever reason. I'm going to track all the authors. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Self. Def self dot all is equal to. All right. This gives me access to all the authors and all the books. Cool. Are there any questions on this, like, class method? Right. Yeah, I'm calling them all on purpose. I mean, this could be, like, all books if I want it all. Yeah. Authors, if I wanted to. This is not a unique idea, though. No, no, not unique. Okay, agreed. So let's actually make a method for author, right? What are some things authors can do? Authors can write books, right? Which makes total sense. So. Let's give this author the ability to write a book. If I put def, uh, what would you want to write this as? Remember what it's going to look like. I can do author person is equal to author dot new, passing in a name like who's the author you guys like? What? Ooh, classic, right? R. L. Stein, and then. What would the method look like, right? Author person dot, what do you want to call this method? Write, write a book, whatever, right? Because then it'll look like this. Something like that, right? This instance method. So naturally, it should probably look like this. Right? This is an instance method that I'm building. And what does write a book do? It creates a brand new book object, which makes sense, right? I don't want to just do something lame like puts made new book. Let's get out of that string land and let's start getting into object oriented land. And that is, it's going to create a brand new book. So, what does that look like? What's the syntax for new book? Powerful. So, well, book, however, needs a bunch of arguments, right? So let's do this. If I click this and I just drag it to the side, bloop, I can have them like split side by side. So what are the arguments for book? Right, title, right? So what's the title of this book? What would you like to write? <laughs> the chronological history of your boy? All right, well, here's the thing, right? Wangtron, if I put write book, every time I write book, what will the name of that book be? Right. Do we want that? I mean, I mean, I want that. But do you want that? 
Probably not. The idea here is that when you run and execute right book, at that time you should be passing in like arguments, right? So you want to tell it that at the time that you invoke it, you want to like pass in arguments. You don't want to hard code it here. So this probably needs arguments, right? Like a title. Oh man, that typo would have been real dicey, right? Pages, some sort of genre, and then ultimately the author, right? You can see it right here. I ripped it because I'm a dirtbag. So then the book.new is going to be pulling from these arguments. So the first argument is going to be title, pages, genre. Hmm. Think about this. Author, last argument, author. You have a question? Or do you want me to finish my thought first? All right. Let's think about this author, right? Let's look at how this method is in being invoked, right? Write a book is being invoked by what? An author, which means that write a book is an instance method because instance methods are on an instance. And so inside an instance method, what do we have access to that's really important here? Remember, this author person is doing write a book. Only this author person should be the author for it. So... I could probably, instead of passing in an author, I can pass in self. And do I actually need this last argument? Because it'll always be self, right? So I'm giving book new four arguments, but when I write a book, I only need to give it three. So here's a clearer example, right? Boop, boop, boop. I have author person two, three, four, and then I have, uh, I don't know, Chet is a good writer. Anyone else want to write a book? Swag Lord. Swag Lord. Oh, man. I said Swag Lord in the other class. They did not like it. Um, it, was, it was bad, bad form, right? So that means that if author person does write a book, who will the author be for this particular book that gets created? R.L. Stein. Right? But what if author person three, my favorite, writes a book? Who would the author be when it's invoked on line 29? Swag Lord, because of self and how it's working. Who feels a little bit better about self, how it can kind of be used in this like metaprogramming state, and how it's affecting each one of these individual books? and it's author. Oh yeah, I have to pass in arguments, right? I was just being lazy because I was just, the important part was talking about self. Yeah, very good. So let's actually kind of like, let's do this. Uh, bloop, go. And let's do this here. Boop, boop, boop. So, does anyone feel a little bit better about sort of this example? Because I know there were a couple of kind of questions. It was kind of fuzzy. But now we see book.new is actually getting sunny. And this is like literally the instance. Yeah? Yes. Uh, let me get to that at the end, yeah. Okay. So... This seems like it should be pretty good. Let's actually do this. Ready? I'm going to run this binding again. So we'll have these four very non-generic authors. Cool. Let's do it. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. You will either really like me or hate me because when you start coding and you start making these like meat morph noises, you're going to be like, oh, that's great. Or you're going to be like, mother. All right. So I have author person. Cool, right? But let's actually take a look, right? If we pause the code here, how many books currently exist in this world? One, right? So naturally, if I do book.all, how many should I see? One book, right? We can verify this by going, noise. 
right? So if I have author person, and this person decides to write a book, remember what write a book looks like. Uh, author, remember what write a book looks like. It just makes a brand new book. So let's do it, right? Write a book takes in how many arguments? What? Oof, about to say, I was a little nervous there. Uh, cool. And R.L. Stein makes a book called Say Cheese and Alive, right? Again for me. Um, and the number of pages, this is a short book, a little 150 action. And then what is the third argument it needs? Genre, right? This is going to be a horror movie, book rather. And so I don't need to put in the fourth argument about who the author is because the author here will be the self, this particular author person. So bam, the return value is this new book. So now if I do book.all, how many should I see? I can even verify this. There are two. Evan, what happens if you use book.all dot size? What does dot size do? I'm trying to figure that out. We got stuck on that like two days ago. Yeah, I don't know. Let's try it out. It should it should run the same as length. I think I think they are aliases. Okay. Well, I'll follow up with you after this about that lab. All right, cool. So, who's confused about how this brand new book got created? Even though the author invoked a instance method that had nothing really to do with the book class. So now, in theory, right? It, the idea is that the object author created a book object. And so what we could do is, let's have this author make a brand new book, right? So let's do the first author again, right? This person made a lot of books. What's another book this person made? Coo, coo, clock of something, right? This is uh, not his best work. Also horror. Yeah? So if I do book that all. I see three books. Yeah? So let's go to author person one more time. It's R.L. Stein. Interesting. What about this person's name? Can I reassign it to be something? You sure? I thought I, oh, I, I thought we uh, we went hard in the paint. Yeah, we accessorized this, <laughs> right? So what is this person's new name? Right, Jack Black. Thank you. Yes, terrible pop culture reference. So if I go to author person, see Jack Black. Who wrote these books? Let's follow. Let's follow this train of thought here. So, when I first did book.all, it was R.L. Stein. Man, that, that, that highlighting is really annoying. It did R.L. Stein, right? And so, if we're following the single source of truth, the author object is in charge of its own name. If every book was written by this author, this author object, if this author object ever decides to change its name, these books are referencing the object and not a particular hard-coded string. So if the object ever changes, and I look at the new objects, it will refer to that single place of reference. Cool, I feel a little bit better about this like single source of truth and how it can be applied. Roll, one nod, two nods, three nods, ah, 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 ah. It's the count, huh? Why is first book printing out like the both a lot of the other ones like nicely formatted line by line? Uh, it's honestly because um, I have like ZSH and the oh, formatter is just not perfect. Yeah. So, anyways, so booked out all. It gave me this RL Stein. I checked out author person because remember it's referring to the author object. It was mm -hmm. RL Stein. I reassigned the name 
So when I looked at author person, the name has changed. I take a look at book.all, and now those objects are changed. Cool? Yeah. All right, so it has been um, just exactly an hour. Do you guys want a break before we continue? I would love one. All right, great. Let's go on a quick five-minute break. What I kind of want to do is solidify this like idea of self. All we kept doing was having this author person keep writing these books. But what about author person three? My favorite, old swag lord, right? So if author person three writes a book, write a book. All right, and what would what kind of book would swag lord write? Sure, a what? A fart. And windstorm. In a windstorm. Sure. Fart in a windstorm. Bestseller, New York Times list, five years in a row. How many pages does this book have? It's gotta have a couple hundred. Gotta have at least a couple of hundo, right? Cool. And ultimately, classic. Not I'm not even gonna bother asking. Exactly. Classic. classic. Right? And because I have self in there, who would be the author for this book? Would it still be Jack Black? No, it's gonna be Based on whatever invokes the method. This is now the self. So, swag lord, right? So if anything happens to the swag lord object, like swag lord decides to change his or her name to swag lady, then who would be the author of this book? Would it still be swag lord? No, it should be swag lady because it refers to that object, that single source of truth. All right, cool. So now we've like talked a little bit more about that self. Let's talk about establishing more of a relationship between these two classes. And the first thing I want to do is I have this book.all, I have this author.all, but the idea here is now I have four books in my book array. The thing is, as an author, right, I want to be able to see all the books that I wrote, which makes sense, right? Like imagine there's like a library and you walk in and you're an author, an accomplished author, and you wrote 10 books. You should, in theory, be able to go to the librarian and be like, hey, can I see all the books written by me? Here's my name. They're probably gonna go, cool, all Gucci fam, and then like return you an array of all the books that you wrote. And that's kind of the idea behind it. Rather than, hey, can you show me all of my books? And they go, sorry, I only have booked out all. Good luck. That would be crazy. So in this author, right, I need to make some sort of method. right? And method names are important. What would you want to name this method to basically return you a list of all of your own books? What would you want to call it? All of your own books? Your all books? Your Let own books. Your own books, right? And this is kind of the idea that we want to get into, and that is remember what it's going to look like. Ready? Remember what it's going to look like. Um, boop, boop, boop. Boop. Right? So it's going to look something like this, and then it's going to be author person. It's going to go your all books. Your own books. Would that make sense here? Or would it be something like author person calling some sort of method like my books? Remember what it's going to look like, right? Which one would make more sense to you if an author was like invoking a method called my books or a method that's called your own books? Right, my books, right? And so this is the idea that I want you to start visualizing and understanding what it looks like when it gets invoked and that will help you name it. So I have this method called my books. Cool. Bloop. Now, what is my books? Right. What should it be? Some sort of list, right? That contains all the books where I, me, almost there, right? Self. 
is the author. Right? That's basically the logic behind this. Right? Are there any questions kind of like the thought process behind it? Because what we really need to do ultimately as developers is we have to have a really good process. If I know what I'm trying to do, then I just need to write the code to do that. The hardest part about writing code is there's no clear deliverable in your mind. If you know exactly what you need to do, and then you can break it down step by step. You can create a algorithm, and then the code will come, right? So the first thing is, basically, I'm going to have to go through all of these books to find out, like, what, am I the author? The idea, systematically, would be like, great, I have these 30 books. The first thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to pick up the first book and be like, cool, who's the author? Jack Black, whack. Second book, oh, Chet, this is pretty cool. It's not my book, but I'll keep this to the side because Chet's powerful, right? And then I go through the third book, I go through the fourth book, I go through each of these books. So, do I have a list right now of all the books? Do I have access to all the books? Right, it would be booked at all. Right? And booked at all returns what? A hash, a string, a number, a tree. It returns an array. So it has access to this all the array methods. Right? So what array methods, what iterators, what if one of these enumerables would be the right one where I'm looking for, I'm looking through all the books, right? And I want to pick out all of the books that are mine. Right? Who feels comfortable with this like select? Right? Who feels comfortable with map? Who feels comfortable with each? You guys like select and you don't know each? This is a interesting. Oh, I was just like throwing my hands up, dancing by myself here. Sorry. Um, yeah, who feels comfortable using just in general, not for this particular case now, using the dot each and the dot map and the dot find? Okay, cool. Yeah, they're all they're all the same, except they do different things, right? The syntax is similar. So select would be the right move for sure, right? And I want to do this again. I forgot to do last time, which is embarrassing. And what would I describe what goes inside the pipes? I've often seen folks use something like X or K or K comma V. And they're not really sure what this means. What goes inside these pipes here? Right. I'm going to put book here, and I will just very quickly glaze over this explanation for those that are like a bit shaky. Inside the pipes, anytime I do one of these iterators, right, select, map, find, each, it's going to go through every single one of the items in the array. So you have to determine what are those items in the array. Here we're going through booked at all. So each of the items in the array is a, yeah, wow, you didn't even let me finish that so fast. So it's a book, right? So what do I want to do here? What's sort of the thought process about what I'm trying to do once I'm going through every single thing inside this book array? Yeah? Right. I want to see if like, correct, I want to see if like, hey, inside the book, I want to check to see like, hey, is that book written by yours truly? So I'm going to put a binding pry here because sometimes that code can be a little tricky to write. What I want to do is I want to pause it right here and then I want to see the information that I have available and maybe it can spark some sort of idea, right? If you kind of don't have a starting point. So my books, cool, let's do it. Uh, I need to get out of here because I wrote some code and I need to actually rerun it so all the new code is there. I now have inside my author class a new method called MyBooks. So let's go to our famous friend, author person number three. And I now I have a brand new instance method, MyBooks. An instance method is being called on instance. Author person three, yeah, I, it's right here, is MyBooks, right? And when I invoke MyBooks, it should hit this, and then ultimately hit this right here, and then hit the binding. So, and there we go. So what exactly is book? That's the first thing I kind of want to test, right? I made this variable book. 
And the first thing it does is it goes through each one of these book items. So let me see what book is. Okay. 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 I see book and it has all these attributes of author, name, genre, pages, and title. Remember, this is a list that contains all the books where I, me, self is the author. So if I'm going through the book, can I check the author? Okay. And what do I get? author object, right? Hmm. Inside the instance method, inside the instance method, what is self? It is the instance that I'm currently in, right? Which is what? Author person three, because author person three is the one that invoked my books. So if I simply check self, I see swag lord. Which makes sense because author person three would in fact be Swag Lord. So can I simply do, hey, is the book author me? In this first iteration, in this first example, the first book in the array, what would this be? False, right? But imagine I had another book. The next book was in fact written by me. What do you think will happen when I do book dot author double equal self it should return true right and so that's kind of the idea so are there any questions kind of like how we were able to approach this problem the pseudocode the process and then ultimately transforming that into working code okay so oh exit whoop whoop by Gangnam style all right, that was really dumb. So what I'm really trying to do is check to see if that book is actually equal. Whoop! Would that work? No. No, right? Because it's the book object. I'm trying to check the auth. The auth. Thank you. Yes. Laugh at the typos. No, seriously. They're most of the time they're hilarious. Uh, cool. If the author is me. Right? So we just basically took that pseudocode, that logic, and then translated it into pseudocode. So let's like, see if it's actually working, because the most important thing is you have to test. Right? The idea here is that you won't always have these amazing R spec tests, and you definitely will not have them on the code challenge. The deliverable will look something like this. Great, you have in your domain like a book and an author, and the author should see a list of all the books that they wrote. That would be the first deliverable. And that's all you get. Would you be able to sort of think through how you would do it? You'd be like, okay, great. There's some sort of class of author, and I need some sort of instance method that can check to see all of my own books, right? Would you be able to make these jumps, these logical leaps? It's important. Let's reveal our vote. Wow. No, seriously. Like, yeah, like you'll get a deliverable just like that. It'll be like, hey, look, listen, uh, in your domain, you have books and authors. The relationship is like a one to many. And then now you have authors. You have 10 authors. There might be some pre written data and might be 10 books that are created. I need you to write a method where the author can see all their own books. Who feels comfortable doing something like this on their own? Maybe just a little bit more practice, not necessarily the logic. Who feels like it's just practice and not logic? Who feels like, I don't know if I could have come to that same logical conclusion? If it works, yeah. so fine. Okay, so your suggestion is inside the author class, yes. there needs to be another attribute that says books I wrote, right? And right now it's like empty, yes. whatever, right? And then every single time I write a book, I push into this array. That's the idea. The, while that will technically work, 
the idea here is books I wrote will be sort of this duplicate data. Okay, I guess, so you want it because it's already contained in all, you want to just use all? Yes, yeah, so here's the thing. If I do books I wrote and I push in all the books that I wrote every time I write it, there's two places I can reference all the books as a instance method of each author, but then also if I'm going through all the books, there could be a potential clerical error. The data lives in two different places, and we don't want to do that. Let's not let's not do that. I think your your example is very 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 specific, and let's dive into that together later. All right, so. This is an example of like a deliverable where you're just going to be able to meet it. Let's talk a little bit about like class methods since that was like a question of yours. Um, let's do this. Inside of books, right? In this book class, should it be the responsibility and the knowledge of each of these book instances about all the books that are over 100 pages? Should I be able to do book one dot over 100 pages? Should I be able to look at all the books that are over 100 pages on an instance? Or should it be the class's responsibility? Let's think, right? If I do something like book one equals to book dot new, right, passing in all the arguments that it needs, should I do something like book one dot all books over 50. Or should I look something like book all books over 50? Which one of these do you think makes more sense? Should it be on the instance of the book or should it be on the book class? class. Right, certainly the book class, right? And so the idea is like who should be responsible for what? And that's kind of where the instance and the class methods split. All right, you guys want me to build this method or no? Let's build it. Cool. So let's say you're on a code challenge and it's like, awesome. There are these 10 books that are made and I need you to create a method. I'm not going to tell you which one really. I need you to make a method that will return me a list of books that have more than 50 pages. That's basically what it'll say. Sure. Oh, so um, let me pause it real quick because I don't want to like, great. So we've determined that this makes more sense, that the book class should be responsible for knowing all the books that have more than 50 pages. So naturally, how would I define a brand new class method? All right, should I just do this? All books over 50? Is that right? What should it be? Self dot all books, right? Okay. So what's the logic here? Like what, what's the process here? All the books over 50. Well, let's think, right? How do I determine something like this? Yeah, I have to check to see like, hey, I got to look through some of the books, two of the books, nine of the books. I have to look through all the books, right? And kind of look like, hey, how many pages you got? 49, trash. How many pages you got? 10? This is a children's story? Get out of here. How many pages you got? 101. Cool. Bet. And then I'm going to put it in this like array. And then I'm going to keep doing that until I go through all of the books. So does it make sense, right? So I need to like look at all of those cool, smart. I need to look at all the books, right? And then determine if they have more than 50 pages. Right? So, what's the first thing you're thinking of, right? What's the first thing you're thinking of? What information do I actually need here? Do I need do I need the authors? No? Okay. What do I need? I need pages? Okay? Pages of what? Should I should I make a brand new book while I'm doing it? Should I book.new it right here? What do I what do I really need? 
The idea here is that I can call book.all. I can. But let's take this one step further. What class am I in right now? I'm in the book class, right? Do I have access to this? I do. So inside the book class, if I wanted to, I can access the class variable. But for right now, let's just talk about the process. Let's think through the problem. Let's figure out the logic. Because that's not really important, right? This sort of micro-optimization of using a class variable, that's not a big deal. But the thing is, I need to look through all the books, right? And what am I trying to do once I look through all of the books? Right, I only want to pick out the ones that have more than 50 pages. So should I be using map? Right, what does map do? It does what? Right, it will mutate each element of the array. It does that one-for-one -one transformation that we talked about last time. So map is probably not a good idea. What about find? What does find do? I'm sorry, I know I heard the right answer, and then I heard yup, so it was definitely right. But does anyone, do you want to try? That's right, find will look through all of them, and the first time it finds one that matches, it'll return it. So it'll never return a list, it'll only return one object. So if I'm looking for all of the books with more than 50 pages, would one object be the right move? No, so find, is that, is that the right move here? No, so I should be probably using the select, which I very much clearly heard, and let's move on. All right. And what are these again? Books. They're books. But I put book because it's each individual book one at a time. So, boop, boop, boop. And now I'm here. I can drop a binding here because I'm kind of like, all right, what do I do? But the idea here is, what is this book? What is it? Is it a hash, a string, a number? It's a book object. And we will know that the book object has certain attributes. What attributes specifically on each book are we looking at? The genre? No, we're looking at the pages. So the book pages right, is more than 50. So am I using a double equal 50 over here? Would that be the right move? What should it be? Right, if the book pages is greater than 50, then I should make that list. Cool? And that's basically the thought process here. Are there any questions as like the, the logic and then like thinking through? And then if you didn't know how, right, I, I see a question, right? You can always drop a binding here or you could drop a binding here. And then you could test slowly, 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 one line at a time. I'm moving a little bit faster because it's lecture and I gotta like push through and your class likes to move fast. So I'm all about it. But I should and would be, when I'm coding, literally writing a line and testing it. Writing a line and I'm testing it. Because slow is smooth and smooth is fast. It's a question. Self dot in the what now? This one? Okay, so the idea here is which one was better? The instance or the class that should be tracking all of the books over 50? Yeah, I'm making another class method. Just like I made a class method called dot all. I'm making another class method called all the books over 50. If I do not include the self, what type of method would it be? Instance or class? It would be the instance, right? So if I don't put the self, it will actually attempt to do this, 30. If I leave the self on, now 31 is what I'm building it for, the class. Good question. You're talking about conditional, nested conditional statements, right? Okay, so 
I'm trying to think of like a good example off the top of my head. Select takes a condition, right? Uh, if you're using if else, then you're adding logic to that condition. Um, you can, in fact, do something like if book pages is more than 50. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yes, we would need that if. Yeah, you would not need the if. Here's why. Select takes a condition, right? The exact same way to write this, so what I'm going to do is do this. I'm going to comment that the like correct way, I'm just going to comment it out real quick. If I was doing something like each, then I would do like, uh, yeah, like long books, right, because it's over 50, is it empty array? Something like that. And then I would have to do if here. Yeah, you're right. I, I done goofed. Then I would do like long books and then I would push in the book. Let's not get into yield at all whatsoever. Yield is very confusing at this level. So yeah, I, if I was using dot each or something, which is why it's more important to pick the correct iterator than it is, because then you're doing like a lot of unnecessary work here. Did that answer your question? Yeah, like you wouldn't really be using too much logic in there, although sometimes it depends on what you're trying to do. If you need logic in there, then put in conditional logic. Yeah, Awesome. So we kind of talked about the difference between this class variable, I'm sorry, this class method, and like kind of how do we think about and determine should it be a class, should it be an instance, and then how to write the instance methods, how to write the class methods, and then establish sort of like these relationships where even though strictly in the author class, it has an instance method that allows it to do something with the book class. Right? Um, it, this lecture is running very long, uh, and I know that you're tired. It's about 4.30. This is basically the bulk of what we we're trying to go over. Right? Let's just kind of summarize this, because some people like learning that way. We talked about the one-to-many relationship. Right? You guys feel a little comfortable about this? We talked about single source of truth and how that kind of like works. We talked about model. So you have like the book model, the author model, right? Domain modeling and the relationship between them. So the book has, uh, the author has many books and the book belongs to the author. This will take a little time to sink in. And then, yeah. Implement a one to many objects relationship. We talked about class and instance methods, class and instance variables, building, building them. Are there any other questions off the top of your head? Otherwise, that's all I have for you today. <laughs>